Betty and the Yeti by Ella Burfoot Betty had a little red sled that she takes wherever she goes. She pulls on the ropes and flies down the slopes, whether it freezes or snows. Betty finds things in the snow when she goes out to play. She puts them gently on her sled and then goes on her way. One day she found a pair of gloves. She put them on her sled and a jingly jangly fluffy hat which she wore upon her head. And when she saw some snow boots, as hairy as a bear, she tried them on her little feet and stamped from here to there. Then she found a woolly scarf, all thick with twigs and leaves. And one enormous smelly coat that came right past her knees. Do these clothes belong to you? Betty asked a polar bear. No, he said and shook his head. I don't need clothes to wear. I've got thick fur to keep me warm. I do not need to gloat. But I've no need for hats or scarves and never wear a coat. Do these clothes belong to you? Betty asked a big blue whale. No, whale said and shook her head and splashed her great big tail. I've got blubber to keep me warm, a special kind of fat. Though I do like the bells on that jingly, jangly hat. Do these clothes belong to you? Betty asked an arctic hare. No, he said and shook his head. Ask that rock over there. What a strange thing thought Betty, peering at the rock. But I've asked a hare and a polar bear, so I can't see why not. Hello, rock, said Betty. The rock did not reply. Hello, rock, said Betty. The rock was very shy. But finally there came a voice that said to little Betty I'm not a rock at all. I am actually a... Yeti! Ah! A Yeti! squealed Betty and she tried to run away. But... Please don't go, the Yeti cried. I'd love it if you stay. Yetis in the wild, you see, are rather shy and small. We have to wear a lot of clothes to keep us warm at all. My clothes are big and hairy. They give folks such a shock that I throw them all away and hid behind this rock. It's very hard to make a friend in the land of snow when you've scared them all away before you've even said hello. Betty didn't fret at all. She'd handed him his clothes. You'd better put these on, she said, before it really snows.
She took his muddy glove in her little mittened hand and talked with him and walked with him across the frozen land. Soon they met Betty's friends in the cold and snowy night. And the smelly, hairy yeti, well, he gave them quite a fright. But when they saw that Betty had hold of yeti's paw, they knew they didn't need to be frightened anymore. And the hare spoke up quite bravely in a loud and cheerful voice. I'd befriend a yeti, given half a choice. So, whale and bear and arctic hare became the yeti's friends. The yeti kept his clothes on and was never cold again. Betty made a hat like his. She wore it every day. And when she went out on her sled, she jingled all the way. You won't often see a yeti in the land of ice and snow. Because unless they've met you once or twice, they're still quite shy, you know. Betty. If you enjoyed that story, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to reach new people. And remember to hit that subscribe button so that you can keep updated with all my new videos. Take care. Bye for now.